Today I'm going to walk another section of the Pennine Way from Doctors Gate to Crowden. I'm starting my walk at Tor Glossop. I'm going to follow Doctors Gate up to the Snake Road, pick up the Pennine Way, head over Bleaklow and then down to Crowden. From Crowden I'll make my way back through the suburbs of Glossop. Doctor's Gate is marked as a Roman road on the OS map. But current theory is, is that the true Roman road that ran between the Roman forts near Glossop and Castleton was further south than this. Here is another footpath sign and these are actually put up by the Peak uh, District and Northern Footpath Society and uh, I do quite admire them and uh, you do see quite a lot of them in the Peak District. Uh, last week I decided I'd join the society and at £15 a year it's only a small charge and uh, I think the work they do, inspecting footpaths and maintaining those signs is a, is a worthy activity. On my right is uh, Shelf Brook running down the valley and uh, it's quite scenic here. Well I've crossed Shelf Brook and uh, started to climb the hillside and now that we've got a bit of height we can take a view back from where I've come from and a view around further up the valley. Well the view across the valley is towards the high shelf stones and it's up there you'll find the wreckage of the Boeing Super Fortress overexposed. Well directly in front of me is Gathering Hill and Doctor's Gate kind of winds around the side of it. Well now that I've passed Gathering Hill I get a view of the ridge directly in front of me which is the line of the Pennine Way and shortly I'll be, uh, I'll be up there travelling along it. Whilst not Roman in origin this track does date back to the late medieval times and its name Doctor's Gate. It's named after the Reverend Dr. Talbot. He was um, vicar of Glossop in, during the reign of uh, King Henry VIII. Well, as I'm approaching the summits of Doctor's Gate, I now get a view of Crooked Clough and a much better view back down the valley. Here we are, approaching the junction with the Pennine Way. And when I get there, I'll be turning left. Well, as I look back, you can see how many cars there are parked on the Snake Road and how many people walk up the Pennine Way, parking there. They'd rather do that than walk the three plus miles and a thousand foot of ascent up Doctor's Gate but they're missing a splendid valley there. Well this section is marked Devil's Dyke on the OS map and uh, probably is an ancient boundary ditch. I'm at the top of Hearn Clough now and this is a true watershed of England. The waters here will flow to the North Sea but just over there is Crooked Clough and the waters of Crooked Clough will flow to the Irish Sea. Well the weather was nice when I set off but now I'm on top of Bleaklow um, it started to rain. Black clouds and Bleaklow seem to go together. Well here we are, Bleaklow in the mist. I'm not going to stop too long, I'm just going to get an Eccles cake and then I'm going to 
get on my way. You can imagine that in the days before GPS navigation, what a frightening and confusing place the top of Bleak Low could be. Well, I think I've just proved my point because I've just took the wrong path. I think I was too busy talking. So we're heading back to where we came. We'll see if we can pick up the correct path. Well, if you're ever on Bleak Low in the mist and you want to know which way to head off, take a compass bearing. Well, I think this is the upper reaches of Torsai Clough and I've just got a cross here and make me way up the other side. The path over to my left, which is, uh, there's a sign for it, erosion control, will take you to Torsai Castle. I think it was once thought that uh, it was some ancient hill fort but I think current thinking is it's just a it's just a natural feature. Anyway, our route down is to follow Torside Clough down towards the reservoir. Well, at least I'm out of the cloud now, and this um, this purple heather is quite uh, quite nice. Well, Torside Reservoir is coming into view now, and some sh sunshine. Oh, well, this hillside here is uh, full of heather. Oh, this is the view from Clough Edge down towards the reservoir and Reap's Farm down there. And then over there is Crawdon. And then in the distance, that will be Black Hill. Well, that's the section from Bleaklow down to Reap's Farm complete. I think it's a bit of a drag that bit, to be honest. But uh, we've only got a short section now to do to Crawdon, and then we can start heading back to the car. Well, unfortunately, they've closed this section of uh, the Pennine Way, and the diversion I think's a tad too long for me. So. I think at this point it's not that far to Crawdon if we were to go across the dam so I think at this point I think I'm gonna start heading back. Well my way back is gonna be down the Trans Pennine Trail and uh, make me my way towards Padfield. Well this was the diversion across Rhodeswood Dam down there. Well I'm not following that diversion because it's going to add a, an extra couple of miles onto my journey today and uh, I'd have to retrace my steps. It's not going to be that interesting so I think the best thing to do is just carry on down the Trans Pennine Trail. I've left the Trans Pennine Trail now and uh, there's a series of field paths that should take me towards Padfield. Well currently this path kind of follows the line of the Trans Pennine Trail or Longdendale Trail uh, which is uh, just on my right there but in a bit it'll start swinging away and start to move away up the hill. Well here I am in Padfield and I'm uh, going to make my way through the streets and I'm heading for Mouse Lord Castle. Well, I've come across an information board <coughs> which says to the south of you stands Mouse Law or Castle Hill, a scheduled ancient monument that may have been an Iron Age fort and also a medieval Morton Bailey castle. Well, this is Redgate, and according to that information board, there was a site of a bloody battle around here. Well, it looks like there's no easy access to the site of the castle, which is through the trees up there somewhere. There's, there's plenty of barbed wire in chain gates but I'll have another wander around and see if I can see a, a gap somewhere. Well certainly from this hill you get a good view across Glossop and if visibility was better you get a good view of the hills beyond as well. Well, I, well, I think this is the closest I'm going to get to the site of the castle and it's just a uh, 
and Mound of Bilbury. Well, I finally arrived back at Old Glossop, and this is the what I assume is Barish Church. Let's have a look at the notice board. Well, I was unable to have a look round the church as the doors were locked, but um, some quite old looking buildings here, and the cross across there. That concludes today's walk. Shame about the path closure, which cut the walk short. I didn't get as far as Crawdon. And shame about the rain in the latter stages of the walk as well. Um, I don't seem to be able to get a, a fully dry Saturday. <laughs>